Sean Blanchfield, co-founder of Patreon. Welcome to Irish Startup TV. All right, thank you very much. So today is an auspicious day in the history of Patreon. Well, one more, yeah. We published a report on the global state of ad blocking. Um, it's a culmination of several, several months of work. Follow up to a report last year, 2014, ad blocking report, which we did with Adobe software. This one is also with Adobe software. And uh, yeah, just got the exclusive coverage from the New York Times this morning on it. And uh, all of the other publications around the world are following up and we're getting right now pretty much constant press and the, uh, the website's hopping. It's very exciting, there's a great buzz about the office. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about PageFair and what it does. Well, we're all about ad blocking or more specifically trying to help website publishers survive ad blocking. Now, ad blocking is a phenomenon that's um, really grown in the last few years. It used to be, you know, geeks, and I say that as a geek, it used to be me and people like me in computer science labs using Firefox in like 2005 using ad block to get rid of ads. <coughs> but um, 2009, Chrome came out. People who used to use Internet Explorer moved to Chrome. Suddenly it was easy to install Adblock. Um, in addition, advertising online be became louder and louder. I'm sure you've noticed this and um, everyone watching has noticed this. Things like uh, non-skippable video ads on YouTube are now the norm. Well, it turns out there's a way to get rid of that. You Google Adblock, you click the first link, you click install, and that's it. You don't see any more YouTube, YouTube ads. You don't see any pre-roll ads anywhere. <clears throat> you also don't see any banner ads, any text links, um, or any of the ad formats that no one really minded in the first place. And the impact of this is, well, number one, yeah, consumers get a faster, cleaner web experience, which people love. And number two, all of their favorite websites go out of business. And this is happening right now, for example, with uh, websites focused on video games that typically have somewhere between a third and half of their audience using Adblock, which means they have to fire about a third to half their staff and their businesses are no longer viable. So that's why you know, we're not going to have any more video related, video game related websites in the future. That's why we can't have nice things. So we see it as our role to save those kinds of publishers from going out of business. So content is a big business at the moment. <coughs> Everyone's talking about content and content is everything from pictures to text to video. Mm. And traditionally <coughs> that was free to consume. But the big question now is the revenue model going forward. So what, what's happening is by virtue of the fact that people are blocking the ads, it means that guys and girls that would have previously created content for free or at no cost mm -hmm. in exchange for advertising revenue are going to say, well, there's no more money to be made here. So that the consequences are no ads, people go out of business. Yeah. Um, the way I like to look at it is uh, maybe because I'm just old enough to kind of remember the start of the web. I remember sitting there in first year in, in college uh, and encountering the web for the first time and being blown away. It's like, wow, this thing exists and it's free. free. <laughs> Unbelievable, right? Uh, the web makes it possible for uh, over the last 20 years for publishers to exist that couldn't have existed in a print-only world where there were high costs of distribution and all that kind of thing. Um, and what we're unfortunately seeing now, pretty much 20 years into the web, is that long tail of publishers, all of that niche independent content that could only exist on the web, now it's going away again, unfortunately, because of their own users using Adblock, uh, which is a real shame. Now, that's a cultural loss, but basically we lose everything that makes the web special. And in the last year, Adblocking has grown by 82%. Uh, this is from your research. <coughs> Uh, in the UK, it was 82%. Uh, globally, 41% on desktop. Yeah, averaging around 50% in most countries. Um, UK turned out to be a little bit uh, farther behind uh, starting off, but caught up quickly. So 82% 82, 82 growth is phenomenal. I think we're talking about something in the region of $3.5 billion in publisher revenue wiped out in the UK alone. <coughs> That's about 20, I think, 1. so. 1.8 well, billion in the New York Times code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, 21.8 billion internationally in publisher revenue. All right. right. So and that's just for this year alone. That's the projection for 2015. Right. right. So that's a lot of websites that, you know, are going into business, you know, that aren't making that money anymore to pay their stuff. And for 2016, that number is set to double again. Yeah, well, you get two compounding factors, right? The, everything is continuing to try and go online. So advertiser money is shifting from TV and print into online. So the digital industry is growing. Um, and within that it's growing industry, you have this growing ad block problem and it's growing so quickly. So you get this compounding effect that's leading to an unexpectedly high growth in the actual cost, economic cost of ad blocking. 
How can you pay for help? <clears throat> well, we've been working at this for a long time. Uh, as you might know, we have a background in video games and Call of Duty. Yeah, you were kind of ahead of that <laughs> curve, and it, it looks like you were kind of ahead of this curve as well. Yeah, they're, they're uh, loosely related stories because coming from um, Demonware and Activision, Call of Duty, um, we got into web gaming and in 2010 we were trying to figure out where the money was going on one of these web games and we saw that 30% of our players had Adblock installed, wow. which is kind of how we got into this. That's five years ago. Yeah, uh, it turned out we were the canaries in the tunnel because it was a particularly like hardcore RPG, RPG uh, text-based multiplayer web game, um, so real geeks, right? But um, it turned out... They're the early adopters. Exactly. And now it's, it's uh, basically 30% ad blocking is true of a lot of websites. Um, you don't need to be a, 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 like a text-based role-playing game. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, our experience using in Call of Duty, for example, uh, we built the infrastructure in there. Um, so we know a lot about doing things at very high scale online and very low level networking. Um, it turns out that this gives us uh, the ability to develop a kind of technology to serve ads to users um, in such a way that Adblock and other intermediaries can't really tamper with what we're doing. Right? So we have a, a very powerful technology against ad blocking. Um, for us, the uh, objective is to figure out how to use that responsibly. And well, the way we see it is um, the web as it stands today is in a downward spiral. It's going to go out of business. People are installing Adblock in response to bad ads. Publishers are running more, more and more bad ads in response to people installing Adblock. It's just so everyone can get uh, like continue for one more week without go, you know, without going out of business. Um, and you know, we're going to see the end of the open web as things stand. Now we have one shot. We have the technology to break out of that vicious cycle and try and get it back onto a more sustainable footing. The only way to do that is to use our technology, which is basically invulnerable to ad blocking to serve only the kinds of ads that no one would really want to install Adblock to get rid of in the first place. And thereby get back to a new situation where web pages are fairly consumed, so page fair. Um, and uh, yeah, we think that we have just one shot at this. And it turns out it falls to us, the low page fair in Dublin uh, right now is the global leader in this technology. And we have, um, I think, established a position where, you know, we're going to do our best and, and see if we can save the free web from going extinct. That's very exciting. And what's even more exciting perhaps is the fact that you are in Dublin and you're very happy to say, hands up, we're Irish. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> it's getting easier and easier these days because so many... Uh, of because our, of the internet. <laughs> well, so many of our, thank, maybe thanks to the IDA, um, but so many of our, our clients and partners in the US actually have Irish bases. You know, sometimes we forget about it, but you know, it's getting to a point where it's kind of hard to think of a big American technology company that doesn't, doesn't have a headquarters business. here. Yeah, that's very cool. And you're looking to hire at the moment as well, because it's quite exciting. If anybody is interested in the web, mm -hmm. the future of the web, PageFair is going to have a massive impact. Yeah. So how can people get involved? Well, we need great, great programmers, right? Who can do things at scale and who can think, uh, you know, think through very difficult problems. Let's say. <coughs> We also, um, well, we're in advertising, so there's lots of other roles to do it, you know, sales and uh, marketing. Um, so anyone who's interested in this general story has a kind of passion for seeing the web continue to exist as a, as a, a shared cultural innovation that, you know, deserves to, you know, be maintained for future generations, um, should get in touch. Pagefair.com. So, Pagefair.com or jobs at pagefair.com and uh, that's where we're at. Fantastic, well thanks so much yeah. for speaking with us right. today thanks, and uh, best of luck with the, the rest of the mm, day. It's going to be pleasure. a busy one from the news side. Yeah, it looks like it is, yeah. Perfect, thank okay. you. Thanks.